welcome i welcome you all to this lecture in the course sandhi in paninian grammar in this lecture we continue studying at sandhi or vowel sandhi we said that at sandhi is classified broadly under two heads ekasthanika ekadesha and dvisthanika ekadesha currently we are studying dvisthanika ekadesha classification of at sandhi ekasthanika ekadesha meant one sthani and one adesha one substituent and one substitute and we studied two instances of this classification namely yan sandhi and ayavayav sandhi we also studied the sutras we also studied the examples in detail and some other grammatical topics related to these two types of sandhis now we are studying the second classification namely dvisthanika ekadesha where we have two sthanis and one adesha two substituents and one substitute the sutra which states this is ekah purva parayoho 6184 in which ekah is one slash one of eka namely one substitute purva parayoho is six slash two of purva para purva means previous para means later purva parayoho therefore meaning in place of previous and later sound eka purva parayoho altogether means one substitute takes place in place of two sounds previous and later this is diagrammatically represented in this manner you have a plus b so a and b are in close proximity samhita where b comes immediately after a and a comes immediately before b now in place of a and b c is the substitute stated so we have a and b both substituents and c one substitute so we have a plus b as the input and any rule in the section between 6184 and 61112 applies and generates the output which is c a plus b is the input c is the output this was not the case in the ekasthanika ekadesha where a plus b was the input and a was substituted by c in this second classification we have a plus b as the input and the output generated is c we said that there are five instances of dvisthanika ekadesha first it is guna sandhi stated by the sutra adguna 6187 second vriddhi sandhi stated by the sutra vriddhi rechi 6188 onwards third there is pararupa sandhi engi pararupam is the sutra 6194 and some more sutras thereafter the next instance of dvisthanika ekadesha is savarna dirgha sandhi and the sutra that states this is akas savarne dirgha 61101 and the fifth instance of dvisthanika ekadesha is purva roopa sandhi stated by the sutra ami purva 61107 onwards amongst these five 
currently we are focused on the first instance namely Adgunaha. This is what we are studying right now and we continue studying this Guna Sandhi. This Guna Sandhi we studied that it is prescribed by this sutra or stated by this sutra 6187 Ad Gunaha. And to recap, the meaning of this sutra is construed in the following manner. There are two words in the sutra, Ad and Gunaha. Ad is 5 slash 1 of A, either short or long. So Ad means immediately after short A or long A. Gunaha is 1 slash 1 of Guna meaning guna substitute takes place. The words continued in this sutra are achi, 7 slash 1 of ach meaning a vowel and so achi means immediately before any vowel. Samhitayam means in the close proximity. Ekaha is one substitute takes place, purvaparayoho in place of previous and latter sounds. All this put together, the meaning of the sutra is when in close proximity, immediately after a short or long, when comes any vowel, in place of both of them, guna substitute takes place. To show it in the form of an equation, we can say that when you have a followed by ach, which means ach coming immediately after a or a coming immediately before ach, in place of both of them, a and ach comes guna as the substitute. Similarly, we can say that at the end of a pada comes a and at the beginning of the next pada comes ach and when both of these padas are in close proximity in the samhita mode, then in place of this a and this ach, the substitute guna takes place after the application of 6187. By the way, guna is defined by Panini in 112 as adeng, adeng gunaha, that is the sutra. What it means is that in this Vyakarana of Panini in the Ashtadhyayi, the word guna stands for a, a, and o, three sounds. They are termed as guna by the sutra adeng gunaha, 112. These are the examples that we noted down previously and we have seen the left hand side examples. These are the prototypes and we looked at the individual specific examples of all these prototypes as well as the first one A plus U. Now in this lecture we shall study these prototype examples A plus R and 6187 applies and R is the substitute. A plus RU is the input, 6187 applies and the output generated is R. A plus long RU is the input and the output generated is R. A plus long RU is the input and the output generated is R once again. Similarly, a plus lu is the input and the output generated is al. And also, a plus lu is the input and the output generated is al. These are the templates of the examples. And now we shall study each one of them with individual specific examples hereafter. So, let us take first of all a plus ru as the input. 6.87 applies and the output generated is R. Here are the examples. So we have Deva plus Rishi. This is a compound Samasa. So these two words are in Samhita mode. This is the A coming at the end of this Pada and this is the Ru coming at the beginning of this Pada. So A plus Ru, this is the case. And now in place of both of them, a and ru, we will have the substitute r by the application of 6187. So the generated output would be dev r 
and she. When joined together, we'll get they were she. They were she. The sage of gods. Now, if we take the example of two words in the sentence, we have atra plus rachati, a at the end of this pada, ru at the beginning of this second pada, and now 6187 applies, and in place of both these, a and ru, we have ar as the substitute. So we have atra, ar, and chati, and we get atra chati. Then we go to the next examples. A plus ru is the input. 6187 applies and R is the output generated. Once again we have a compound and we have Maha plus Rishi. This is the stage of derivation we are in where we have A coming at the end of this word, Ru coming at the beginning of this word. This is a Samasa. So they are obligatorily in the Samhita mode and that is why we have a plus ru as the situation over here. This is the environment. So in accordance with 6187, in place of both these a as well as ru, we have ar as the substitute. So we have maha, ar and she, when joined together we get maharshi, that is the meaning, the great stage, that is the word and that is the meaning, maharshi. Similarly, we have Rama plus Ruchati, where Rama is a separate word and Ruchati is another separate word. Now, at the end of the first word, we have long A. At the end of the first word, we have long A followed by Ru at the beginning of the second word. So, 6187 applies and this A and Ru they both are replaced by ar. So we have ram, ar, chati, ram, ar, chati as the output. Next we have a followed by long ru and the output generated is ar after the application of 6187. So we have tava. Tava followed by ru karaha. So, a coming at the end of this pada, ru long coming at the beginning of this pada. In place of both of them, we have ar as the substitute. So, we have tav, ar, and karaha. So, we join this together and we get tavar karaha after the application of 6187. Next we have A plus long ru and the output generated is ar. So we have harina plus ru karaha where you have A coming at the end of this pada and ru coming at the beginning of this pada. So they are in the samhita mode and so 6187 applies. And the output generated is Harin ar karaha, harin ar karaha. Then we have a plus lu as input and 6187 applies and al is the output. So we have tava followed by lu karaha. Tava is a separate pada at the end of which appears short a. Lu karaha is a separate pada at the beginning of which appears lu. So here 6187 applies and the output generated is tav al tav al karaha that is tav al karaha. And finally we have a plus lu and the output generated is al after the application of 6187. So we have harina plus lu karaha where we have a followed by lu. These two padas are in the samhita mode 
and so therefore 6187 applies and in place of both this a and this lu comes a substitute which is al. So we have harin al karaha. When we join these together we get harin al karaha. Now after we have studied the examples let us also study the substitute selection criterion that is being used in this particular sandhi. Now let us list down the substituents first. We have following substituents a whose place of articulation is kantha, e whose place of articulation is talu, u whose place of articulation are oshthau lips, ru whose place of articulation is murdhan and lu and lu whose place of articulation is danta. If we look at the substitutes we have only three. So a is the substitute whose place of articulation is kantha, a is another substitute whose place of articulation are in the form of kantha and talu. O is another vowel whose place of articulation is kantha and oshta. So now we can select suppose we have a plus e. So we have kantha plus talu in terms of the places of articulation of the substituents and so the substitute that comes very close to this set of substituents is A because A also has kanta and talu as the place of articulation. So now we substitute A in place of A and E because of the matching of the place of articulation. Similarly if you have A followed by U, A has place of articulation kanta who has place of articulation oshthau. Now in place of both of them we have o as the substitute because its place of articulation is kanthoshtha which matches with the place of articulation of the substituents. Now what about o followed by ru and o followed by lu? The place of articulation of o is kantha and the place of articulation of ru is murdhan, the place of articulation of a is kantha and lu is danta. So if we have to perform gunasandhi, what would be the closest substitute that would replace a and ru? This question needs to be answered. This is answered by Panini in the sutra Urendra Paraha 1151. What this sutra means is the following, uhu and an and raparaha are the three words that are present in this particular sutra, uhu, uhu, an and raparaha. Uhu is the sixth one of ru which means in place of vowel ru. An is one one of an, an stands for a, e and u. Here the pratyahara an is formed by na coming at the end of the first sutra. So an stands for a, e and u. Raparaha is one slash one of rapara which means a sound after which appears the consonant r. So now the meaning of this particular sutra is the an substitute stated in place of ru appears with consonant r added to it. I repeat the unsubstitute stated in place of ru appears with consonant r added to it. So we have ru as input and un as the output. What it means is ru and the output is un plus r. So to explain it further ru is substituted by ar where r is added to a and a is part of an 
and ir where r is added to e which is part of an. Similarly, ur and r is added to u and u is part of an. So now when we have a plus ru as the substituents, a place of articulation is kantha, ru's place of place of articulation is murdhan and so now the substitute which is guna which is only a, a and o. So in place of ru plus a, the substitute guna which will match the place of articulation of the substituents is nothing but ar, ir and ur affected by uran rapara 1151. <coughs> what is the meaning of rapara over here? Rapara that is the division of words. Rapara means a sound after which appears the consonant r. Even though r is stated with a vowel over here, the vowel a is for the sake of convenience and convenient comprehension. Otherwise, this r stands for the consonant r. Now, this r is interpreted by the later Paninian grammatical tradition to mean the pratyahara r. How is this pratyahara formed? When you take r sound as consonant in the fifth sutra, Hayavarat, as the beginning, and then you have this a coming at the end of l. So, this a is also marked as it, and then this consonant r is taken from this fifth sutra, and these two are joined together, and so you get the pratyahara r. What does it cover? What does it stand for? It stands for consonants r and, con and l. So, rapara means literally a sound after which appears the consonant r as well as l. So, now urandraparaha means the unsubstitute stated in place of ru appears with consonant r and l added to it. So, un plus ru is substituted by ar, ir and ur and al respectively. In case of lu, when lu is the input and un is the output, lu once again this means that lu is the input and in fact un plus l is the output. This also means that lu is the input and al, il and ul these are the outputs. So now let us revisit the question. What about the substitutes in place of the substituents a plus ru? So a's place of articulation is kantha, ru's place of articulation is murdhan. Now we have amongst the substitutes ar, al etc available. So now in place of a plus ru we will substitute ar where a, a's place of articulation is kantha and r's place of articulation is murdhan. Similarly when the substituent is a plus lu then a's place of articulation is kantha and lu's place of articulation is danta the closest substitute in place of both of these is al where a has kantha as the place of articulation and la has the place of articulation danta. Here is an example tava plus lukaraha and here we have a as the substituent together with lu and a's place of articulation is kantha, lu's place of articulation is danta. So we have a and la as its substitutes. So we have tav al karaha finally taval karaha is the derived form. <coughs> After having studied all the examples of this guna sandhi, let us now study the interrelation of rules. 
First, let us look at Rityakaha 61128. What it means is it has got two words, Ruti and Akaha. Ruti is 7 slash 1 of Rut. Rut means vowel short ru. Ruti means immediately before short ru. Akaha is 6 1 of Ak, in place of Ak. Prakritya is another word that is continued by nature or in its initial or unaltered form. Shakalyasya means in view of the grammarian Shakalya. So what this sutra means is that immediately before short vowel ru, ak remains in its unaltered form according to the grammarian Shakalya. What it means is that according to Panini, before short vowel ru, ak does not remain in, an, in its unaltered form, rather it gets the substitute gunasandhi. So, this situation results in an optional form. According to Panini, Gunasandhi takes place. According to Shakalya, no Gunasandhi takes place. So, we have Deva plus Rushi as the input. 6187 applies and the output generated is Dev, Ar and Shi. And when this is joined together, we get Devarshi or by the application of 61128, we also get Deva plus Rishi. Now, the interrelation of Akasavarane Dirghaha. This is very important. The Sutra Akasavarane Dirghaha has got three words. Akaha, which is Paipan, of Ak, meaning immediately after Ak. Savarane is 7 slash 1 of Savarana, meaning homogeneous. Savarane means immediately before a homogeneous sound. Dirghaha is 1 slash 1, meaning long. One substitute in the form of long vowel takes place. The word that continues in this sutra is achi, 7 slash 1 of ach, meaning a vowel. So this means immediately before a vowel. So, the overall meaning of the sutra is when in close proximity, immediately after ak and immediately before any vowel that is ach, in place of both ak as well as ach is placed the substitute in the form of their long homogeneous vowel sound. So we have a plus a as input and the output is a. Similarly, a plus a as the input and the output generated is a. Then we have a plus a as the input and the output is a. And finally, we have a plus a as the input and the output generated after the application of 61101 is also long a. Now all these four cases fulfill the conditions of 6187 to apply. And so gunasandhi can take place. But we observe that 61101 requires special environments in comparison with 6187. That special environment is in the form of right hand side environment being the homogeneous sound which is savarna sound. And so the scope of application of 61101 is limited in comparison with 6187. And so in this limited domain, 6187 does not apply. To summarize, in this lecture, we studied in detail the Gunasandhi. We also studied the remaining part of the examples in details at different levels within a Pada and also in between two Padas. We also studied the interrelation of 6187 and 61128. We also studied the interrelation of 6187 and 1151. We also studied the interrelation of 6187 and 61101. Finally, we also studied how the Ra Pratyahara got interpreted. Now we study the next instance 
of this Thanika Ekadesha. So we study the Vridhi Sandhi and the Sutra 6188 for its study. Thank you for your patience.